Another beautiful day in the Sunshine State. We welcome you to Tampa, Florida, the campus of USF. The Bulls in the final week of the regular season hosting the Pirates of ECU. Glad to have you with us on ADN. A big time matchup between these two, both looking for a big win before they turn their sights to the conference tournament. We turn our sights to the standings in the American UConn, no surprise, atop the standings, and then very tight. Cincinnati 9-4, UCF, USF, both with 8-5 and five records. And in the mix still, ECU 5-8. and eight. They understand the importance of picking up a big win tonight on the road. Hello and welcome. Glad to have you with us alongside Claire Coggins. I'm Kit McConico. And Claire, as I mentioned, the final week of the regular season and both these teams trying to pick up three big wins before the conference tournament gets underway. And Coach Fernandez has stressed the importance of 18 wins this season, and he's got two more games at home where they're really good in order to get that. But they have to get past this Pirates team today, who, by the way, is coming off of three wins this, this past three games. And so Coach McNeil has her team poised and confident for tonight. Should make for a great matchup. Take a look at your keys to the game first for the visitors. Well, ECU has to value their offensive possessions. They do a really good job of stealing the ball, but they throw the ball away a lot. They must rebound the ball tenaciously. South Florida is extremely good at rebounding the basketball, and South Florida also can shoot the lights out from the, from the three-point line, so they have to guard the three today. And your keys for the home team? Limit transition opportunities. ECU is best when they're in the open court, so South Florida's got to get back. Also, handle the full 40 minutes of hell that ECU likes to put on teams, handle that full court pressure, and play the full 40 minutes. What players are you keeping an eye on? Well, tonight, this two-time AAC Freshman of the Week is absolute dynamite for Coach McNeil. Tania Thompson is everything you could want from a freshman, averaging just shy of 14 points per game. This kid plays with no fear. She has a pretty pull-up shot. She's unselfish. She's athletic with a great heart for the game of basketball. Look for her to have a very solid game today. And your key player for the home team? The sophomore from Italy is the quintessential leader for the Bulls. She is the most important piece to this Bulls offense. She runs the show at point. She's tallied 60 assists already this conference season, but she is also a huge scoring threat and can light it up from beyond the arc. So ECU will need to make sure they always know where Pinzon is on the court. Two red hot teams ready to get underway. We'll have the opening tip between the Pirates and the Bulls when we return on ADA. There's a lot to do out there. You can either talk about it or you can do something about it. At ECU, we choose to do things and we can help you do just about anything. Come here to keep hometowns thriving, hearts beating, or make waves across the world. Wherever you're headed, this ship can get you there. With 30,000 of us doing so much, you won't find anyone sitting around. You ready? We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. Welcome back, moments away from the opening tip here in Tampa, ready to get things underway between ECU and USF. Take a look at the starting lineups for the Pirates and the Bulls. And well, could be the first ever collegiate matchup between the Shaneke sisters. We'll take a look at that. Elena, the leading scorer, gets the start. One of the guards for the Bulls. LaShawn DeMonk, the leading scorer, number two for the Pirates. As we now head down courtside, check in with the third member of our crew, Chris Torello. Yeah, thanks so much, guys. I had a chance to speak with both coaching staffs. Let's start with the visiting Pirates of ECU. One thing they really want to do is, you guys kind of alluded to it, they want to rebound better. Their past couple of games during this three-game winning streak, they've actually done that, kind of matching their opponent rebound for rebound. Speaking with Jose Fernandez for the home Bulls, he says, Chris, turnovers. Go look at USF. Go look at UConn. Look at UCF. We did not do a good job of taking care of the ball, and we have to stop Monk. We have to stop Thompson. They're their two best scorers. If we can do that, we'll have a chance to walk out of here with a big one. It's a big game for both teams, guys. It is indeed. Thank you, Chris. And he's exactly right. When it comes to the glass, Claire, as you know, always critical. USF, the best rebounding team in the conference, out rebounding their opponents by nearly 10 boards a game. 20th year head coach Jose Fernandez, the Miami native. What a job he has done with the Bulls. Incredible job he has done, obviously, with this USF team. And 
Back to starting lineups. No surprise that Bethy Manunga has the starting position again today. She was a little bit in the doghouse in the last game, but today she gets the start and she is a beast on the on the board. So East Carolina must make sure that they box out today. They will have to. Happy to have Manunga, the Belgian, back in. ECU able to get off to a hot start with the opening three. Both teams with the pink is Monk, who else? And what a response right back the other way. This game's gonna be 100 miles an hour today. Both teams like to push the ball. They both like to uh, shoot the ball very quick in offense. So it should be a fun one to watch today. Should be indeed. Three ball off the mark, batted out of bounds. It'll be Bulls ball. Bulls in the white and pink as it is their annual play for K game. Raising awareness, supporting innovative ways of fighting all cancers affecting women, and providing support through giving strength, courage, and hope. Take a look at Monunga. The visitors with the pink on their jerseys, the predominantly yellow road jerseys for the Pirates, and a quick foul right in front of the ECU bench. Well, that's not something that Coach McNeil <laughs> is happy about right there. Tiara Chambers really needs to bend her legs a little bit more and get around. And McNeil, first year as the head coach of the Pirates, three years at Hartford previously, and looking to get this team on the upswing. She's done a very good job, as we mentioned, winners of their last three coming off their best win of the season, that huge victory over Temple. They trailed Temple by 17 points at the end of the first quarter. They trailed by seven going into the fourth, but still found a way to come away with a win. Yeah, and getting better is her motto. That's what she really wants from this season is just every game that we play, let's get better. Every practice that we have, let's get better within that practice and learn something to do that will translate into the next basketball game. She's happy with her team right now because they've done that. Three ball, Thompson unable to knock it down. Rebound batted to her, drives in, and a nice touch finishes in the paint. She's a special kid. We talked about her earlier, but... Uh, USF has got to make sure they contain her because like you said, Monk and Thompson are their two biggest scoring threats. Here at Thompson, 5'11 freshman from Connecticut. Very impressive young player. The rebound and the put back doing work in the paint. Elena Chineke, the freshman from Thessaloniki, Greece. First in points per game. As double figures in 15 of her 22 games this season. The Chineke and a nice drive in, finishing off the glass. Well, LaShonda Monk is the person that really set that play up. She's done a really good job tonight of flow in offense. She let that play develop, and she got the ball to Thompson at the opportune time. Sydney Harvey draws the foul on the other end. You take another look. Thompson, so impressive. The freshman, great size and athleticism. It's been a huge contributor. Both teams shooting better than 50% to start things off. Back underneath, we talk about the rebounds, how critical they are. You're seeing the power of the Bulls on the glass early on and just through the fingertips again, Thompson, the intended target, but she couldn't hold on. And that was a good look by Monk. It, it might have been a little bit forced, especially you have to know who you're throwing the ball to as well. And you got a big girl running narrow uh, on the lane line and her back is to you and that's a really hard thing for a big girl to catch so next time maybe take a few more dribbles and make a better pass. Manunga fouled and will head to the line. And what a difference she makes. You mentioned maybe in the doghouse a bit the six foot junior forward from Belgium. Well whatever house she was in she has come out with tenacity she she did in the in the previous game you could tell she had a little chip on her shoulder from not being in the starting lineup and she can't catch the ball there at the free throw line and not be guarded because she's going to take you to the rack every single time she's strong she's got a really good um, feel for the inside of the paint 73 percent free throw shooter averages just under a double double nine points nine rebounds a game leads the bulls in boards and cuts it to a one point game as we anticipated, up and down early on, just three minutes in, we've already seen the track meet well underway. Thompson, short, Manunga there with the rebound. Bulls looking to run. Cheneke, too far in front of her. And that's what ECU will do to you. 
Tanaya Thompson didn't necessarily take the best shot right there, but she's a freshman and she plays with no fear. She's hit a few shots, she's ready to go, but ECU just gets back on you and they create havoc and you turn the ball over a lot with them. So South Florida is going, USF is gonna have to really make sure they uh, value their possessions. Looking inside, wide open, but couldn't finish. They'll stay with the Pirates, the baseline jumper from Thompson. Long rebound, out to Manunga, running the floor. Now to Pinzan. Lisa Pinzan, the sophomore point guard from Italy, setting things up, was injured early in the season. Now back to full strength. USF does such a good job of running so many different things in offense. They're always screening you. They're always back picking you. They're always uh, back cutting. And <laughs> it's a really hard team to guard. And Coach McNeil said that they're going to have to make sure they switch things today, stay in front. And they do a really good job at the end of the dribble there of creating fouls and getting to the free throw line. Sydney Harvey draws the foul on Ryan Evans. Harvey, the 5'10 sophomore guard out of Nashville. Shoots better than 80% from the stripe. And able to put the Bulls up by a single point. Four minutes in, 8-7 USF with the lead. And you talked about her in her second shot and you didn't jinx her, good job. <laughs> Hard to jinx an 80% free throw shooter. I was about to say, the odds were on my side that time. Over in the corner, trying to find Thompson, pulls up. Thompson, nothing but net. So pretty, and they did such a good job there running their offense all the way through to the final play, the final option, and tonight Thompson just rises over you and makes that pretty shot. Lechenegge unable to hit it. Here come the Pirates in transition, three on two. Getting back, pins on, great work defensively. The last two times down the floor, Pirates settling for shots early in the clock and unable to get the rebound. If you want to beat a team like USF, you can't settle for those shots, especially because you don't have numbers in the paint to rebound. There's no ability to get the basketball once the shot is made. So LaShonda Monk is going to have to really use her leadership skills tonight to lead the team and, and make sure that they all do the right shots. What a touch from Pinzon. Averages nine points, just over nine points a game. And beautiful touch inside the free throw line. And nine points doesn't sound really, oh my gosh, unbearable, but she has an unbelievable effect. And she is able to score 20 to 30 points any given night, you cannot let her go off. Maybe just nine points, but she's second in the conference and over four and a half assists a game. A good look to Shea Leverett, the 6'2 redshirt junior center from Georgia. Coach Fernandez couldn't talk more about Shea Leverett just being an extremely raw athlete. She could have played volleyball, he said, at any top 10 program in the nation for volleyball, which is an amazing feat whenever you think of how athletic those young women are on the volleyball teams. On cue, ears burning, Leverett from point blank range. Well, ECU is letting them get too deep. They can't, they can't let USF get inside the lane and get underneath that arc there and post up. They've got to make sure they get in front or at least body them a little bit, make them uncomfortable so they can't catch that deep because they're money from the paint and if not, you're going to foul them and they're money from the free throw line. Over with Monk, five seconds on the shot clock. Kicks out, long two. Off a Pirate, it'll be Bulls ball. A timeout, 3.15 remaining in the first. USF with a five point lead over the visiting Pirates of ECU. There's a lot to do out there. You can either talk about it, or you can do something about it. At ECU, we choose to do things. And we can help you do just about anything. Come here to keep hometowns thriving, hearts beating, or make waves across the world. 
Wherever you're headed, this ship can get you there. With 30,000 of us doing so much, you won't find anyone sitting around. You ready? We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. The American is committed to ending the stigma related to seeking help for mental health conditions. If you have a mental health condition, know that you are not alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common. Mental health issues in the United States. And more than 30% of student athletes have experienced overwhelming anxiety. There are resources available on your campus. Or in your community to help. Mental health is as important as physical health. Asking for help can be difficult. Build and use support systems. With friends and family. Hope. Educate. Awareness. Listen. Talk. Help. The American. The American. The American. Building healthy, powerful minds. Welcome back. Five point game. USF leading 14 to 9. Bulls shooting 45%, 5 of 11 from the field. The Pirates just 31%, 4 of 13. Take another look at the standings in the American. UConn 13 and 0. They have lost a few games, but they've been out of conference this year. And then you see how tight things are. Three through seven. UCF, USF both aired eight and five. ECU five and eight. But they have today and two more games after tonight remaining. And if they can pick up three wins to end the season, well, they would end the regular season on a six-game winning streak. Yeah. For sure, and and they're rolling. Like we said earlier, they're they're rolling. They had three games in a row. This first uh, seven minutes of the quarter was back and forth, back and forth. But both teams are staying true to who they are right now. Uh, USF. Everybody that has played tonight has scored, and East Carolina staying true to Monk and Thompson with their points. But someone else is going to have to step up. I look for Dom Clayer to do that. They need an inside presence as well. If they can get back and not take quick shots, they can box out, rebound, and maybe get some easy uh, buckets there at the rim. Thompson leading all scores, six points, three of seven shooting. But as you mentioned for ECU, Thompson and Monk, they're the only two Pirates that have made field goals. Whereas you look at for the Bulls, it is by committee. Harvey leading with four points. Leverett also with four. Penzan, Janeke, Manunga, everyone for the home team has chipped in with at least a basket. And that's where ECU is going to have to make sure, well, that's a good start right there. They need to get in transition points. That's that's how they score. That is their best whenever they're in the open court. Shonda Monk with the steal, and that is what she does best. The junior from Greensboro. This is a team that puts opponents under pressure. It is all about turnovers. They're on pace to break the school record in steals this year. They set it back in 2011-2012. They forced their turnovers into an average of 17 and a half TOs a game. Kim McNeil's done a great job with her team. She talks about controlling the controllables, and it's defense. You can play as hard as you possibly can every single game on defense, and her team really does that. They needed that break there at the 313 mark because they were tired. They, they play um, extremely fast all the time, and they came out a lot more energized here in this uh, last half of this first quarter. A good start after the timeout. Able to get the steal. Little touch pass. Shinege turns it over. And they're going to call a foul. It looked like she shuffled the feet. Did the freshman from Greece. Officials saw otherwise. As Beatrice Jordao wearing number 31. The 6'3 sophomore from Portugal has come on for the Bulls. These referees have a tough task in, in front of them today. Everybody that plays for USF that is European, uh, they shuffle their feet a lot, but they do it in a, in a non-threatening way. They have the European step, and I think the referees have figured that out with them, and they do a good job not calling the travel. Right now, four of the five on the floor. Four of the Bulls are European. Pinzan, Janeke, Bermejo, the Spaniard, and Jordao from Portugal, Henshaw. The senior from Palm Coast. The American on the floor is on the floor. Bulls with it. 
able to force their own turnover. USF said, if you guys are going to press us, we're going to press and trap you too. We can do the same thing. We're really good defensively, and it worked out for them right there. And they get around the screen. Freshman drives in, lost it. And will stay with the Bulls. 13 seconds on the shot clock. Well, you're exactly right. This is a USF team that we've seen all season long. They can press opponents if that's the style that they choose to play. Henshaw. Well, they can do that because not, not only are they athletic, but their basketball IQ and their coachability is so high that they can understand that on miss make, we, we can get back in whatever defense we need to do. Earned over, basket will not count. The travel, the Bulls not doing themselves any favors. Just under two minutes remaining in the quarter. Coach Fernandez stressed as well, no live ball turnovers. So that's one of the turnovers he wants back. He doesn't want those type of turnovers um, that are not necessary. Oh, what a move, able to cut through. And the nice finish cuts it to a one possession game for ECU. And here comes that pressure from the Pirates again. Do they get blocked? What a great block by Chambers. What a play from Chambers. She had enough awareness to keep her feet in bounds, get, grab, grab the basketball, keep her feet in bounds, and turn and find her, uh, her teammate. That was just a, a really nice play. 6'3", sophomore from Virginia. Three ball in and out. That would have tied it. Well, Tania Thompson's getting hot. They're, they're going to have to make sure they get a hand in her face because she's playing with a lot of confidence right now. It's on not finding Henshaw, the intended target. The Bulls have missed their last four field goals, and Monk able to draw the foul. When you need a basket, chances are if you're ECU, you're going to number one or number two. That time, number two able to draw the foul. Great block, like we talked about. Kept her body in bounds, but LaShonda Monk, her patience coming down the floor right there, she understood that USF had they were lagging behind. They couldn't get back. They're tired right now. And LaShonda Monk, she came up the floor with patience and saw that there were only two people ahead of her. So she took that right to the rim, and she's getting rewarded for it now. She needs to make the second free throw. 78% free throw shooter. Monk off target on the first. Able to go one of two in that trip to the line. Makes it a two-point game. Under a minute remaining in the first. A three from the Bulls, unable to knock it down, and now a chance for the Pirates to retake the lead. Thompson, right into the hands of Manunga. Two quick shots right here. Both really quick threes by both teams. I think they need to slow it down just a tad. They're both really tired and they're short on their shots. Six seconds difference between the shot clock and the game clock. Another three, another miss from long range. And it'll be Pirates ball, 16 seconds remaining in the quarter. That's not something Sydney Harvey is used to doing is missing two threes in a row, but that's also because ECU does a good job of hurrying you up and they make you tired because you have to be uh, in the game mentally, not just physically, because they're on you the whole entire time. Monk, three seconds. Monk pulls up from long range and nails it. To end shot. the quarter. The Pirates take a one point lead into the second and NBA range three from LaShonda Monk. Puts ECU ahead 17 to 16 as we go to the second. fight to the top is coming to a new home be sure to claim your spot at the new battleground for this year's American Athletic Conference Championship March 12th to the 15th at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth Texas Undeniable. 
Be undeniable. Start of the second quarter. Welcome back. A one-point Pirates lead. ECU on top of USF 17-16 here on AD and alongside Claire Coggins. I'm Kit McConico. And Claire, the end of the quarter, the final two minutes belong to the Pirates on a 6-0 run to end the quarter and take the lead. Coach McNeil can't, probably could not be happier than what she's seen right now out of her East Carolina team. They're, they've got 10 rebounds. USF has 12. That's really good for them. But also, they're confident. They're pushing in transition. They're playing really hard uh, full court press. They're doing everything that they need to do to beat South Florida tonight. So far for ECU, it is the Thompson and Monk show. The two combined, and they have scored every basket for the Pirates. It is much. It has been more by committee for USF, but a bit surprising is they have the lead and looking to extend it. Who else? Thompson there, long rebound, and tied up was Ryan Evans. Really nice nose to the ball there, Ryan Evans had in getting that rebound. That's exactly what they're going to have to do in order to beat this USF team, and she did it there. It just didn't go her way. That pressure. They like to put their opponents under it for the full 40 minutes. Little time to breathe against the Pirates. Janeke looking inside. Manunga wide open feed. Harvey, no one there. Easy finish. And they move to that zone, and it's unfortunate the backside of the zone. They subbed out some players for fresh legs, but they didn't get the backside of the zone to shift when the ball was on the opposite side, and that's why that that shot happened for USF. But defensively, ECU is going to have to stay on and really move with the ball and move with each other. It'll stay Pirates' ball, 12 seconds on the shot clock. Here at the Yingling Center, it has been such a great home court advantage, 12-2 and two this year, the Bulls here at home. ECU, not a lot of success on the road here against the Bulls. They haven't won here since 2009. But off to a good start. Had the lead at the end of the first. Long two. Able to knock it down. Monk with the basket. You can't let her go one-on-one -on, -one on you because eventually she's going to break you down and she's going to win that battle every single time. But it's kind of nice to see Chinike sisters on each other on the other end. They're guarding one another. The freshman from Thessaloniki, Greece, the first time they've had the opportunity to play against each other as collegiate athletes. A lot of buildup coming into this one and finally coming to fruition. And the response. Janega able to hit the three. And that was a deep three, too, and the ECU did a great job playing defense there, but when somebody is that good at shooting, it doesn't matter where they are on the floor. You have to get that hand in the face. Probably not the one you want to leave open. The Bulls leading score. The put back off the miss. And the Bulls have extended it to a four-point lead. And it's just automatic. They, that's what they can do to people. They just, they'll, they'll miss, but they'll get the rebound put back every single time. And it's something you have to continue to really work at defensively if you want to beat them. They are so good on the glass, and more often than not, the team that comes away with that battle of the boards comes away with the W, and the Bulls know that. And Zahn Janeke there in the middle at the free throw line, calling for it. Instead, gets it back from Harvey.
Really nice hands, great defense. Little cherry pick there, nice little finish. Wide open, Monk in the front court, no one there. The shot clock was coming to an end at the other end. The Bulls unable to get a shot off. This zone defense for ECU is, is really nice. They pulled back a little bit from the full court pressure maybe to contain some legs, contain some breath, but well, <laughs> it, as nice as it is, if you don't get out and really put the hand in the face, Pinzon is going to destroy you from the arc. Mentioned She's so Pinzon good. Pinzon averages just under 10 points a game, but she can shoot it from long range, shows it off there. Puts the Bulls back on top by five. Manunga read it perfectly, intercepts the pass. Back to Manunga underneath. And out of bounds, Bulls ball. And that's where Manunga struggled a, a little bit this year. She obviously got the steal here. She's a great defender. She's always got her eyes up, but when she gets the ball right there in the paint, she has struggled, Coach Fernandez said, with size, and right there at the basket, any type of uh, contact. So the second she learns how to pivot right there and go up off of two feet and really use her body, she's going to make a lot more and ones for this team. RV short from the free throw line. Can they get with the rebound and the put back? Europeans use their hands so well. I mean, they're so ambidextrous, even if they're not, they work on their game so much that they can go left, they can go right, they can have the floater in the lane, they can do their Euro step. This team is really fun to watch because of the European flair that they have. Anunga with the steal into the front court. As to with her, takes it herself. Unable to finish. The basket and the foul, the rebound and the putback. That time, Shea Leverett using the athleticism down low. Tara Chambers needs to just stay straight up on this right here. She's so much bigger and taller. There's no need for her to come over. Leverett was probably going to make that anyway. Too bad she got the foul call there. Chambers picks up the foul. Athleticism from the 6'2 junior. Mentioned she could have been a star volleyball player. And instead elected to stick with hoop and... Bulls fans very happy that she did. They've extended it to a seven point lead. They are on an 8-0 run over the last just under two minutes of play. And that was after finishing the quarter on a 6-0 run and it has been back and forth and there's the response from ECU. This is one of those games you can't catch your breath. No, and, and Thompson's just money. She comes off that flare screen every single time. She's done this three times now, and, and nobody steps up. Nobody switches or hedges on that flare screen. Therefore, she comes right around, wide open shot, 15-footer. It's money. It certainly is. When Tierra Thompson is taking that shot, she has proven all game long, 10 points, 5 of 12 shooting. So far, it is all about she and Monk, the only... Fired still with made field goals. Well, they're giving Tanaya Thompson space. So as long as they give her space, she's going to continue shooting those shots. And I don't blame her. And ACU needs her to make those shots. Tanaya Thompson doing a fantastic job. The block. No, they're going to say Thompson got a piece of Harvey. Tanaya Thompson getting it done on the offensive end was trying to enforce her will on the defensive end. We'll take another look. Yeah, she got her. <laughs> the freshman got her for sure. And you know, she, she didn't defend that back cut there. And that's what got her. You can't, you can't uh, keep your head in one place. You have to swivel your head and you have to flip your hips and, and get through uh, when somebody back cuts on you. And that's what U USF is so good at. They never stop moving. Harvey at the line. Takes advantage of the trip to the charity stripe. Ten point game, largest lead of the ball game for the Bulls halfway through the second quarter. And underneath it is going to go against the Pirates. Well, things getting going from bad to worse for ECU. We'll have a timeout on the floor. 453 remaining in the half. Bulls lead by 10. 
there's a lot to do out there. You can either talk about it, or you can do something about it. At ECU, we choose to do things. And we can help you do just about anything. Come here to keep hometowns thriving, hearts beating, or make waves across the world. Wherever you're headed, this ship can get you there. With 30,000 of us doing so much, you won't find anyone sitting around. You ready? We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. The American is committed to ending the stigma related to seeking help for mental health conditions. If you have a mental health condition, know that you are not alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common. Mental health issues in the United States. And more than 30% of student athletes have experienced overwhelming anxiety. There are resources available on your campus. Or in your community to help. Mental health is as important as physical health. Asking for help can be difficult. Build and use support systems. With friends and family. Hope. Educate. Awareness. Listen. Talk. Help. The American. The American. The American. Building healthy, powerful minds. Four fifty-three remaining in the first half. The Bulls have extended their lead to 10. They have been on a run here in the second quarter as we head back down to the court side to check in with, with Chris Torello. Yeah, guys, you guys were talking about the Shinecki twins before. You got Katarina, who's wearing number five for ECU. And you also have her sister, number five, for Elena, for USF. And what's funny is they met at half court before the game. And then afterwards, Elena kind of gave her sister a shove. And then after one of the media timeouts, you had Shea Leverett for USF look over at her teammate and say, that's your sister. So I think they're both trying to take in the moment like you guys were talking about. I have a twin sister. Even in college, I'm not sure I would have enjoyed seeing her after time away so it says a lot about their maturity it certainly does thanks chris they've been looking forward to this but i saw elena when, when she hit a three katarina was on her and there was a there was definitely a word there and um, it's one of those things you know if you have siblings that is a battle from day one particularly when it's a twin well, yeah, and obviously there's a reason they didn't want to play together at the school here in America. They wanted to go to two separate schools, which you would think coming from overseas and a language barrier and, and new things, new food, everything, you would want your sister. But nope, not these two. They did not want to play together. They elected to play in the same conference and fans of the American glad they did. But that's as close as they would get. ECU and USF each picking up one of the Chinecki twins. The star freshman point guards from Greece. 440 remaining in the first half. Three ball. Who else? Elena Chineke from down from downtown. Yeah, that's gonna be an all-night situation for USF if ECU doesn't do a better job of, of getting their feet beyond the three-point line. They've got to make sure that they find Chineke, Pinzon, Harvey, all three of those kids can really light it up. And that gave the leading score now for the Bulls, 12 points, four of eight shooting. But for USF, it's, it's been by committee. Everybody, all five on the floor, getting involved, all contributing with baskets. And again, for ECU, it bears repeating. Thompson and Monk, the only two that have scored for the Pirates thus far. Yeah, and USF is obviously, they're just being who they are. They're going to get their shots. Everyone's going to score for them. But ECU needs to start. I'm glad that Don Clater right there just shot that ball because she's capable and, and they need her to be capable. They need more players shooting the ball besides Tania Thompson. See if they can get Clater involved. The red shirt junior from Winston-Salem. Harvey around the screen of Leverett. Underneath, Manunga establishes position high off the glass in the finish. Betty Manunga. Great. Makes it a 15 point game. Great kiss off the glass there. I'm, I'm so glad she used the backboard. Not not enough players nowadays use the backboard. It's there for a reason. That little small square is there to help guide you. And a lot of players want to just uh, just shoot it right over the rim. But that was a really nice finish by, M by Manunga. Out of bounds. And Manunga, she, she's been getting it done on both ends. So good on the glass. You see her establishes the low position. 
Yeah, that was just a really nice play. Good pivot, nice. It was good position, like you said. She kept her body low. She had her legs bent the whole time, so she was able to utilize her size and her hips and get around that defender and then jump high enough to rise above them and make that shot. And I know you as a former pro, thrilled that she used a white square. Well, I just like the skill of it all. And that's what this USF team has. They have a lot of skill because, like I said, they work on their game. They're all gym rats. It's pretty basketball to watch. Kicked out, Monk for three. She's got it, LaShonda Monk. There's Monk, that's, that's what LaShonda Monk needs to do. She has got to just start playing her game. I think early on, USF kind of, they, they kind of can intimidate you a little bit and you, you want to beat them so bad because they're really good and it's on their home court and they're great at home, but you got to just play your game. And LaShonda Monk, she's a baller. She knows she can shoot the ball. She can take the ball to the rack. And I'm really glad that she pulled up right there and she didn't look for another player to score the ball. Junior from Greensboro can do it all. And you and I mentioned there at the break that trying to get Thompson so involved and maybe Monk a little too deferential to Thompson early on for ECU. Yeah, and I understand wanting to run the play and do what your coach wants, but what your coach wants is for you to run the play if it's there. And if it's not, don't force it. Get the ball in the hands that it needs to be in. And, and that's LaShonda Monk usually has the ball in her hand, so she needs to create more scor scoring opportunities for herself and that will open Tanaya up more. That will open Dom Clater up more. Monk 16 points to lead all scores thus far. Banked in the basket and the foul. Elena Cheneke a chance for the four point play. She's just unconscious tonight and I feel bad for Chambers there because I know she she was trying really hard. She didn't want another three from Cheneke. She tried so hard to get out of there, but she couldn't control her body. And, and Chineke's, she's just not going to miss tonight, it looks like. I can guarantee you from the day that she signed with the Bulls and her sister signed with the Pirates, they have had this game circled on the calendar. And she is showing up in a big way early on. And that's what you want from your players. You want that competitive fire. And you want someone to take extreme pride in the games and and that's what they have, and it's really fun to watch her shine right now. Just over two minutes remaining in the half. Bulls have opened up this lead, and it's the time that ECU really needs to fight back, try to cut in to the 16-point deficit. Thompson, well short. Oh, excuse me, Thompson there, vying for the rebound, the shot from the Pirates well off target. ECU needs to try to find a way to get the ball in the lane, in the paint, and, and get some inside buckets. They're settling for outside and or uh, guarded two dribble pull-up shots. And it worked out early on, but right now it's not. And they've got to figure out another way to score. Inch out to pins on for three. Forget about it. You get the ball to the top three kids on the three-point line wide open, and it's a make every time. Aliza pins on the sophomore point guard from Murano, Italy. Feet set in the corner. Great ball movement. The unselfish play from USF we mentioned. It is all five on the floor getting involved for the Bulls. And part of the reason they have been so successful, they have now extended it to a 19-point lead. They've been on a 14-3 run over the last three and a half minutes have the Bulls. Well, their team chemistry is great. You can see that on the floor, but it does help whenever you play against one another all the time back in, in Europe, in the European leagues and stuff. So they came over here knowing each other and comfortable with one another. And they just play the game the way they're used to playing it overseas, which is the European way. It is a different form of basketball, but they've done such a good job. And Coach Fernandez is such a great coach of of getting his players to do what he wants them to do. And it's 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 showing right now they're pulling away easily and it's really cool to see. He recruits players that fit the program and he certainly has a pipeline from across the Atlantic Ocean. Driving in Clater looking and out of bounds, turned over. Just 61 seconds remaining in the half. 
I like the drive by Claytor. Even though she lost it there, she was trying to get inside, and that's what she's going to have to continue to do because she's strong and athletic enough to do that. She just mishandled the basketball there at the end. I think the Pirates waiting for that. Or to send them to the locker rooms, talk things over, make some changes because the second half, or excuse me, the second quarter, been dominated by the Bulls. Harvey with the drive and the finish. Well, they're just picking them apart now, and Coach McNeil really needs to rally her troops at halftime and figure out how to stop them defensively um, and obviously how to score a little bit easier in the second half. Later out with Monk. 10 seconds on the shot clock. Looking to take Pinzon off the dribble. Long rebound, back with Monk, ends up with Thompson. Thompson draws the foul. But Thompson fouled, 11 seconds remaining in the half. Well, they didn't quit on this play, and that's what the Pirates never do is quit. And it's good if they can make both these free throws here and, and get a stop, go into halftime with a tad bit of momentum. It will help them in the second half. Nia Thompson, the star freshman from Connecticut, good on the first. See if she can cut it to a 19-point game. Unable to do so. Chance for a final shot of the half. Janike pins on for three. Well, that was a gift. That was a rare wide open miss, but you could see all three, three defenders from ECU running to stop Chineke from the three point line. Monk close, but couldn't have hit it. And that'll do it for the first half. A 20 point Bulls lead. Bulls made six of their last eight field goals in the half. They kept the Pirates off the board in the final 247 as we head down to check in with Chris. Thanks so much. Well, Coach, uh, you know, you were down after that first quarter. What kind of change except for the scoring, really? Well, it's us defending. You had, you had two guys, and Monk and Thompson had all their points in, the, in, the, in, the, in that first quarter. Then we just switched up and just wanted to double those guys, just get the ball out of their hands. And uh, how about Chineke right now? She's playing pretty well in front of her twin sister. Yes, she is. I think she's she's playing under control. She's attacking. She's very assertive on the offensive end right now. All right, we'll let you get to it. Thanks, Coach. You got it. Thank you. All righty. Guys. Thanks, Chris. Coach Fernandez, you might imagine, pretty pleased with that second quarter. 47-27 Bulls at the break. Undeniable. The American is committed to ending the stigma related to seeking help for mental health conditions. If you have a mental health condition, no, you're not alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental health issues in the United States, and more than 30% of student athletes have experienced overwhelming anxiety. Listen to your teammates and others about what they are going through. Think about the words you choose, avoid labels, and use stigma-free language when communicating. Build and use support systems with friends and family. Asking for help can be difficult, but seeking help to improve your health, academic, or athletic performance or another goal is a sign of strength. Hope. Educate. Awareness. Listen. Talk. Help. There are resources on your campus and in your community for help. The American. Building healthy, powerful minds. The fight to the top is coming to a new home. A 
sure to claim your spot at the new battleground for this year's American Athletic Conference Championship. March 12th to the 15th at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. in Tampa. Bulls lead the Pirates 47-27 to stick with us. Get you first half half. First half highlights coming up after this on ADN. There's a lot to do out there. You can either talk about it or you can do something about it. At ECU, we choose to do things and we can help you do just about anything. Come here to keep hometowns thriving hearts beating, or make waves across the world. Wherever you're headed, this ship can get you there. With 30,000 of us doing so much, you won't find anyone sitting around. You ready? We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. The American is committed to ending the stigma related to seeking help for mental health conditions. If you have a mental health condition, know that you are not alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common. Mental health issues in the United States. And more than 30% of student athletes have experienced overwhelming anxiety. There are resources available on your campus. Or in your community to help. Mental health is as important as physical health. Asking for help can be difficult. Build and use support systems. With friends and family. Hope. Educate. Awareness. Listen. Talk. Help. The American. The American. The American. Building healthy, powerful minds. Undeniable. The American is committed to ending the stigma related to seeking help for mental health conditions. If you have a mental health condition, no, you're not alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental health issues in the United States, and more than 30% of student athletes have experienced overwhelming anxiety. Listen to your teammates and others about what they are going through. Think about the words you choose, avoid labels, and use stigma-free language when communicating. Build and use support systems with friends and family. Asking for help can be difficult, but seeking help to improve your health, academic, or athletic performance or another goal is a sign of strength. Hope. Educate. Awareness. Listen. Talk. Help. There are resources on your campus and in your community for help. The American, building healthy, powerful minds. The fight to the top is coming to a new home. sure to claim your spot at the new battleground for this year's American Athletic Conference Championship. March 12th to the 15th at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. 
Halftime, the home team, USF Bulls, leading the visitors of ECU 47-27. And it was actually, it was a Pirates lead at the end of the first quarter, but a second quarter dominated by the Bulls. Yeah, first quarter, all ECU. They did a really good job getting Tania Thompson shots. They did a really nice job uh, pressuring defensively uh, on USF, but second quarter came around and USF did what they do best. They found their open players. They made their threes. ECU struggled. They got out of their full court pressure. I think that maybe in the second half they should get back to what makes them great, which is stealing the basketball and getting open court shots. Unselfish ball movement from the Bulls. Janeke fouled, completed the four-point play. Pinzon got into the action as well. Everyone for the Bulls got into the action in the first half. And a big part of the reason they have a 20-point lead at the break. Take a look at those stats from the first half. The Bulls shooting almost 50% from the field. 50% from the field, but the points in the paint are huge as well because even when they miss, they get the rebound and they, they get points in the paint and ECU is not doing a good enough job getting the ball inside the lane at the block and getting easy buckets and they're going to have to switch that up in the second half. They're going to have to do a better job on the glass. We knew that was going to be the case. USF, one of the best rebounding teams in the conference. Stick with us. We'll have the second half between the Bulls and the Pirates when we return on ADN. Undeniable. The American is committed to ending the stigma related to seeking help for mental health conditions. If you have a mental health condition, no, you're not alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental health issues in the United States, and more than 30% of student athletes have experienced overwhelming anxiety. Listen to your teammates and others about what they are going through. Think about the words you choose, avoid labels, and use stigma-free language when communicating. Build and use support systems with friends and family. Asking for help can be difficult, but seeking help to improve your health, academic, or athletic performance or another goal is a sign of strength. Hope. Educate. Awareness. Listen. Talk. Help. There are resources on your campus and in your community for help. The American. Building healthy, powerful minds. The fight to the top is coming to a new home. Be sure to claim your spot at the new battleground for this year's American Athletic Conference Championship. March 12th to the 15th at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas. Moments away from the start of the second half here in Tampa. A lot of happy Bulls fans, as you might imagine. They really turned it on in the second quarter. We will head back down, check in with Chris, standing by with the head coach of the Pirates. 
All right, thanks so much. Yeah, Coach, I mean, looked good there after the first quarter. What would you guys talk about in the locker room to get back in this? No, we got to do a better job on the defensive end of the floor. We give up 31 points in a quarter. That's not going to cut it. We know they're good shooters. We got to be disciplined. We got to be able to move in our defense. Then we got to keep them off the boards. A lot of second chance opportunities. All right, let's get to it. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Guys. Thank you, Chris. Claire, you heard her right there. They gave up 31 points in the second quarter. A lot of that was via the three ball. When you think about USF, they started the game 0 of 6 from long range. They finished the half 5 of 13. And that's what really good teams do. They they keep staying true to who they are. They're not going to let 0 and 6 deter them. But Coach McNeil's 100% right. She And I know that she's not very happy with her defense right now. And it, it's hard to play a team like USF that can do it all. Beyond the arc, inside, we talked about it, but ECU has to stay disciplined and getting out if they want a chance to cut back into this lead. And that game pins on, making it rain from long range. That game three of five from three, pins on two of five from a distance. And they just do such a good job of spreading the floor, finding the open shooter. And that's the kind of pressure they put on a team. Unselfish, I've said it time and time again, but really, that's the key. If you look at this, Janeke, 16 points, Harvey, 10, Penzan, 8, Leverett, 9, everybody getting involved. Well, and I, I would like to say, for ECU's sake, that, oh, they'll cool off. Nobody shoots it that good. That They're going to cool off in the second half, but not USF. They don't cool off, so ECU really has to stay disciplined on the defensive end and get some stops. They were able to get some stops, able to force some turnovers. We'll see if they can. We take a look at the upcoming broadcast we'll have for you here on ADN. We will crown champions this weekend in Birmingham. The Indoor Track and Field Championships. And some great competition coming up there. Temple and Tulane on Monday. Final regular season game of the women's basketball season. Then we'll be turning our sights to the conference championship and softball back underway. Tulsa makes the trip to Orlando and then it'll be Wichita State coming right here to Tampa on Friday. Ready to get things underway in the second half. There's Jose Fernandez, you heard him. Not pleased with the first 10 minutes. They've made the necessary changes going into the second quarter. And one thing to make the changes, but to have your team execute them as well as the Bulls did, he has to be very pleased. And you've got to think that the first few minutes of the second half critical for the Pirates. Absolutely. The first four minutes uh, of this basketball game could determine, of, of the half, sorry, could determine the outcome of the game, depending on how ECU is going to take the licks that they just endured in that second quarter. If they can en endure it and get some points on the board, they'll be okay. But they've got to really come up on this pressure defense that they did in the first half, in the first quarter, excuse me. And we haven't seen it really since. Neither side able to come up with a basket their first time down the floor. Monk unable to change that. And then the second chance opportunity to put back from Thompson. To a wide open Leverett all by herself. Basket and the foul. Well, there's a lot of time left in this game, but that almost feels like a dagger. That play in particular because... ECU did a great job getting the ball in the open court, doing what they do best. They got the wide open layup and then they did not get back on defense. And to make matters worse, they foul a really good free throw shooter for a possible three point play. Weber able to complete the three point play. And it's a 50 to 29 Bulls lead. And it looks like ECU able to come up with the first field goal of the second half, but then Leverett Able to leak out the other way. No one on her to make matters worse. The foul committed. Thompson. Thompson pulls up. Out with Monk. It's the call from Coach McNeil setting things up. Over to Thompson for three. Well, it's just that same flare play that they've been running all game, and Thompson's had the open shot. She's cooling off a bit, and they need to figure out a different way 
to make baskets. And, and there's Leverett right there, just taking it right at him. Nobody stepped up, nobody got in front. Nobody bodied her and said, hey, you're not gonna get a layup on me. They've gotta really uh, get more defensively aggressive. The question for the Pirates, who else was gonna step up? Was it gonna be Clater turned over by Dumb Clater, the aforementioned Winston-Salem native, but so far, that trend remains. Thompson and Monk, the only two Pirates to have scored a basket, and quite simply, that's just not gonna cut it, particularly against a team as good as USF. No, it won't, and Coach McNeil talked about that Dominique Clater is her X factor. Even though Thompson and Monk are the ones that score the, the hefty amount of points, it's Dominique Clater that they must have in order to win basketball games because she can, she's really good defensively and she can score. She, she scores eight points a game in the conference and, and right now nobody on the team has any points besides Monk and Thompson. So she's gonna have to figure out how to be that X factor and she's gotta get it going now. Pins on from the corner. Long rebound out to Monk looking to run. Up to Katarina Chaneke. Tough shot, able to hit it. Fading away, Clater finally with her first field goal. Just beautiful touch off, off the glass. Really nice shot. Hopefully that helps her confidence le level a little bit. But they did it again in the open court, and that's what they do best. They've got to get the ball. But it's hard to do whenever South Flo uh, USF keeps making shots. It's hard to run out. Little baseline jumper there. Everybody getting involved for the Bulls. That time, Beatrice Jordal, the sophomore from Portugal. I mentioned the contributions coming from everyone. Pirates, long rebound, able to retain possession. They'll get another opportunity here. Monk setting things up. Katarina Chineke really wants another chance at that three-point shot to hit in her sister's eyeball. Maybe she'll get it this half. Underneath. Good, good take. Good take by Clater. That's exactly what she needs to do. Get some fouls, stop this clock, score whenever time is on their side. Be aggressive. That was a really nice take by uh, Dom Clater. How many Clater draws the foul? Exactly what you wanted to see from number 23 for the Pirates. I love her shot. That old school behind the head. Jump shot, uh, free throw shot as well, but you don't see many athletes, male or female, shoot the basketball like that. That is an old school on the, ba on the driveway shooting at midnight type of shot, and I love it. Chineke with a three. Elena Chineke left open and continues to pour it on. And that's just that I stay in the gym all day long and all night long type of shot by Chineke. She just cannot miss tonight. Her first battle as a collegiate player against her sister. and Now her sister the other way. Blocked. We'll have to see what the call is. It certainly appeared that it was a clean block coming from Elena on Katarina. And it's simply just gonna be out of bounds. Take another look. What hustle that was by number five in white. She did not want her sister to make those two points. Just a great effort defensively. Back in Thessaloniki. Family watching. Hoping both, both of the twins have a successful outing tonight, but that is, that is a play that has happened more times than you can count on the hardwood in the front drive. And the hustle play from Elena. Which is interesting because Coach Fernandez talks about how Greek players don't play defense, that, and that's something that um, Chineke has had to learn in his system and that she's still learning that type of game. Nice take there by Monk. And the fact that she ran back as hard as she could in the open court and got back on defense and made that play just shows that either one, she's extremely competitive because that's her sister that had the basketball or she's really learning how to play really good defense. Make no mistake about it. Bragging rights on the line tonight between the two number fives. 
So far, the Bulls on their way. Elena drives past the putback. Jordao with the basket and a chance for the three-point play as she was fouled. They're just, they have so many weapons. They just kill you on every, every aspect of the basketball game. A really nice rebound put back by Jordao there. Jordao, part of Portugal's U-20 team and those FIBA Women's European Championships. And, and that's one thing, Claire, that the coaches say time and time again, particularly Coach Fernandez, when you bring these European players over, they have experienced so many of them at the international level. They've represented their countries at the U18, the U20 level. And when they get to big time Division One college basketball, it's not as big of a jump for a lot of them. No, and it, they're all extremely mature for their age, even though they're freshmen, sophomore coming in, usually it takes one to two years to really mature in the in the game of basketball at the collegiate level. But these kids come in, they're used to being coached hard. They're used to national coaches that coach pros overseas, who, by the way, are extremely good basketball players. These kids get to play alongside professional athletes in their national teams. And so college is just a breeze kind of as far as coming in and getting acclimated to all the new things. So yeah, he, he's definitely uh, done a really good job of surrounding his team with international play. You've seen it from both sides as well. Maybe the reverse order college and then international play. Yeah, which which kind of is why I have a little bit of love for the Chinecki sisters right now, because I did play in Greece, not Thessaloniki, but Athens. However, it, it is a different way of life, and it's something that I wasn't as mature at 22 doing overseas as these kids are coming in at 17 and 18 years old. So I have so much respect for, for the USF basketball team. Your players off the feed from Anunga. And she's just solid at the block. She's just a solid post player, back to the basket type of kid. Time out, 4.56 remaining in the third. USF extending their lead, 62-34. Bulls on top of the Pirates. There's a lot to do out there. You can either talk about it or you can do something about it. At ECU, we choose to do things. And we can help you do just about anything. Come here to keep hometowns thriving hearts beating, or make waves across the world. Wherever you're headed, this ship can get you there. With 30,000 of us doing so much, you won't find anyone sitting around. You ready? We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. The American is committed to ending the stigma related to seeking help for mental health conditions. If you have a mental health condition, know that you are not alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common. Mental health issues in the United States. And more than 30% of student athletes have experienced overwhelming anxiety. There are resources available on your campus. Or in your community to help. Mental health is as important as physical health. Asking for help can be difficult. Build and use support systems. With friends and family. Hope. Educate. Awareness. Listen. Talk. Help. The American. The American. The American. Building healthy, powerful minds. Four fifty-six remaining in the third. Bulls lead at 62-34. They've gotten it done, and they've gotten it done on the glass. Well, Bethany Mananga is just an absolute beast in the paint. She's got such a knack for getting the basketball, rebounding the basketball. She's got a nose for it. She wants it. It's her pride. It's her passion in the basketball game. She was a JUCO All-American, and, and she's brought that type of tenacity to the USF Bulls. Mananga, 10 rebounds in 21 minutes, dominating the boards is Bethy Mananga, the junior from Belgium. Leads the team in rebounds, and when she is out on the floor, they are a different team. We mentioned missed a few games, and they are very happy to have her back in the starting five. What an impact she has made tonight. Yeah, and she's somebody that 
it, she gets she does this almost every single game so it's not that ecu isn't necessarily just not boxing her out or whatever but she's she's going to get hers basically every night she's going to rebound the basketball she's just a force to be reckoned with she is indeed we knew the first half of this third quarter was going to be critical for ecu but it's been the Bulls who have just put their foot further down on the gas pedal and they pulled away even more. Time of the essence now, Monk. Right now, nothing going the Pirates' way. And isn't that always the case? You get a really nice shot, but you're down so many points. You want to chip away, but the rim is just not your friend whenever you're down this far, it seems. And unfortunately, they cannot buy a basket. And unfortunately for ECU, the stat remains. Thompson and Monk, the only two that have made a field goal. And even though they both are in double digits, Monk with 18 and Thompson with 13, not nearly enough against USF. Timeout on the floor, 422 remaining in the third. Bulls on top, 62 to 34. The American is committed to ending the stigma related to seeking help for mental health conditions. If you have a mental health condition, no, you're not alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common mental health issues in the United States, and more than 30% of student athletes have experienced overwhelming anxiety. Listen to your teammates and others about what they are going through. Think about the words you choose, avoid labels, and use stigma-free language when communicating. Build and use support systems with friends and family. Asking for help can be difficult, but seeking help to improve your health, academic, or athletic performance or another goal is a sign of strength. Hope. Educate. Awareness. Listen. Talk. Help. There are resources on your campus and in your community for help. The American, building healthy, powerful minds. Twenty-two remaining in the third. Bulls on top of the Pirates, 62-34 here on ADN. The Pirates, they have, well, they've been not scored in the last two and a half minutes. In the Bulls, it was the three in the first half. They're getting it done in the paint here in the second. They really are, and that's what happens whenever you're a great three-point shooting team. You open the paint up for yourself because everybody is running out to guard you, and voila, the paint is open, and they're really... Um, taking advantage of that. They are indeed Leverett, Jordao, Bermejo all going to work in the low post. And that was opened up, as you so correctly said. Pins on and Chineke in the first half. They were spreading it, knocking down threes, forcing that defense out. And you look at the difference in points in the paint. Yeah, and, and then you look at Jordao as well. She's got more points than she does minutes right now. She's seven points in five minutes, and that's just it's just a dagger, you know, everybody on this USF team can can play and and what a wonderful thing for coach Fernandez to be able to say, OK, I'm going to sit you down because I've got somebody else that is ready. Next woman up. They had to work on the depth earlier this year. Pins on. She was out injured. They didn't have her. Brava Silva out tonight. They don't have her. But because of the depth of this team, it really doesn't matter as Monk who knocks down the three, a big response, much needed from ECU. Yeah, and they're not going to quit. This game is not over. They can chip away and chip away. If they just get a string along a few stops and some more makes, open up that shot, get that rim loosened up a little bit, they can get back in this game just like this. This is what they do the best. Great job by Monk right here finishing that fast court. Forces, forces the steal. We mentioned the Pirates on pace to break the school record in steals. Right now, they have 355. That record set back in 2012 at 388. Yeah. 
Cordell trying to establish position. Now will pop out. Kaneke wide open. A rare miss. Bermejo with the board. That may be the only time all game long we've seen Chineke miss two in a row. Yeah, and Nicole Hope is lucky that she missed those shots. She she got a little bit lost there on defense. She got a nice rebound, so that's that's a really good thing. But she's got to make sure she doesn't lose Chineke uh, on the offensive end, on the defensive end, sorry. Out of bounds off ECU. It'll be Bulls ball. First year head coach Kim McNeil. Heard her at halftime, said, got to do better defensively. And they have in spurts, but consistently, that's that's been the issue. And against a team like USF, if you are unable to put together a full 40 minutes, it's going to be hard. Yeah, in the past three games that, that ECU have played, they've, they've played a full 40 minutes. And specifically, the last game against Temple, Coach Mc Kim McNeil was out due to a funeral she attended of her uncle, her dear departed uncle. So our condolences go out to her for that. But her husband stepped up and, and became the head coach of that game. And her players really stepped up. They really played hard for her. They had a passion for that game. And they came back. They were down 17 points at one time. And that's the team that they need to tap into right now and make sure they get back and they start getting some stops. We're down by 17 early. They were down by seven heading into the fourth quarter, but still able to come from behind, and they got that big victory over Temple. They're going to have to do something similar tonight. They came back for that 56-50 to 50 win over the Owls. But time of the essence. 225 remaining in the third, and they cannot afford to trade baskets at this juncture. They need baskets and stops. Driving in, Thompson. Jordao there. The foul will send Josephs to the line, the freshman from Ontario. Out of Brampton there in the greater Toronto area. And better work on the glass, something we didn't see in the first half. Yeah, she made an effort to get a hand in that back and box out as best as she could. Sienna Josephs did a really nice job. She obviously wants to win this game she's playing with fire she's just a freshman and doesn't get a whole lot of playing time but when she gets to be on that court she's going to show coach that she's she wants to play and she's going to do everything she can to get more playing time and a chance for ecu as Manunga heads to the bench the top rebounder for the bulls out we'll see if the pirates can take advantage with her not on the floor it's a much needed and deserved rest Manunga's getting now Harvey, what a look. And unable to hit it, Pahazic, the junior from Denmark, short. But the drive from Harvey and able to send that pass out. Well, and that's another thing, another aspect. She's not European, but this summer she got to play with, with Team USA in Vegas. And she got to play alongside of uh, some of the UConn players. And... There's nothing better than playing three on three. You, that's how you learn how to play alongside one another. That's how you learn spacing. That's how you learn uh, really the key points of basketball. And, and Sydney Harvey is just a really special kid. And she's going to be a great, great player for USF. Under two minutes remaining in the third, a 15 point game. Thompson, two defenders there almost immediately. Pulls up, Thompson in and out. And that basket looking smaller and smaller now to the Pirates. It's all but in for her right now. Ahazic drives in. Uh, excuse me, rather, pins on a beautiful take. Apologies there. Just that high arc off the glass. It's always incredible to me how, and a lot of NBA players do this as well, and WNBA players, but you don't see it quite too often in college basketball, but she just drives and gets that ball so high up off the glass, and what a great defensive play there by Sydney. Harvey looking to fight through the screen, and you see it right there, not set at all. Josephs couldn't get her feet down, and Harvey forces the turnover. Well, that's a freshman mistake, and that's something that ECU 
just has to get better at. And like I said previously, getting better is, is Coach McNeil's model, motto. Uh, they, they're not going to win every game. They're not the most talented team that's going to be on the floor on any given night. But as long as they get better in one aspect, and tonight it looks like possibly they can get better in getting stops down the stretch. Maybe they need to work on that to claw back into this game. And they need to get better on the boards. We knew that was always going to be an uphill climb against the team as good as the Bulls were in rebounding. Pirates being out rebounded 33 to 25 in total rebounds. And Pahadzic, the redshirt junior from Denmark at the line. Under a minute now remaining in the quarter. Back to a 19-point Bulls lead. In and out, another miss. Leverett. Well, Shonda Monk did a good job there of reading the defense. She saw Jordao come out really hard on that hedge and, and knew because she's basketball savvy that her teammate, Dom Clater would be wide open on the other side because that's who Jardau is guarding. And unfortunately, just like we've been seeing, the ball is just rimming in and out and they just cannot get anything to go down right now. So Clater, maybe a bit of frustration after the miss, picks up the foul, her third. We'll send Leverett back to the line. Leverett, one of two in that trip to the line. Makes it a 30-point Bulls lead. And 18 of those points for USF are free throws. So when you think of it that way, get it, they, they let USF get to the line a little bit too much tonight. Janeke looking for the acrobatic shot. Leverett underneath. Gets it back. Inshawn able to get the shot off before the buzzer sounds. Just 10 minutes remaining. And the Bulls in full control over the Pirates. USF leading ECU 70 to 42. There's a lot to do out there. You can either talk about it or you can do something about it. At ECU, we choose to do things. And we can help you do just about anything. Come here to keep hometowns thriving, hearts beating, or make waves across the world. Wherever you're headed, this ship can get you there. With 30,000 of us doing so much, you won't find anyone sitting around. You ready? We don't just predict the future, we shape it. Because as a preeminent research university, we don't focus on what should be, we focus on what could be. The American is committed to ending the stigma related to seeking help for mental health conditions. If you have a mental health condition, know that you are not alone. Anxiety disorders are the most common. Mental health issues in the United States. And more than 30% of student athletes have experienced overwhelming anxiety. There are resources available on your campus. Or in your community to help. Mental health is as important as physical health. Asking for help can be difficult. Build and use support systems. With friends and family. Hope. Educate. Awareness. Listen. Talk. Help. The American. The American. The American. Building healthy, powerful minds. Start of the fourth quarter here on ADN. The Bulls lead the Pirates 70 to 42. USF, they've been so good at home and the streak looking to continue. We will crown champions coming up this weekend in Birmingham, the indoor track and field championships. We'll take a look at some of the great broadcasts coming up for you here on ADN. The final regular season game of women's basketball. It'll be down to the Big Easy. The Owls there to take on Tulane on Monday. And then to the diamond we go, Tulsa. 
It'll be in Orlando to take on UCF on the 27th and the Shockers of Wichita State. They will be right here in Tampa on the 3rd to take on the Bulls. There's some great broadcasts upcoming for you on ADN. Just 10 minutes remaining. ECU with this three game winning streak. Coming off one of their best wins of the season, but they have run into a buzzsaw here today at the Yangling Center. This team, Claire, the Bulls, it's been a complete game performance. There's a reason coming into tonight. They are 12 and two here at home. And there's just something about being at home. They're a different team. Yeah, I was just getting ready to say that. They, they're they so good at home. They protect their home floor. They take pride in that. And if you're the opposing team, you have to have a near perfect game because they've got these rims figured out. This USF team, they know how to score the ball and they, they do this to a lot of teams at home. It's not just tonight. It's not just this Pirates team. They have been wearing their opponents out here at home. They absolutely have. They've been so good here at home. In fact, ECU, they have not won here in Tampa since 2009. If they're going to change that tonight, you're going to have to get things in gear very quickly. Tied up, Cheneke. The arrow gives it to the Pirates. Now Monk pulls up, blocked by Leverett. Really nice awareness there by by Leverett. She understood that Monk, if Monk has the ball or Tanaya Thompson has the ball and they come off a screen, they're most likely going to go ahead and shoot the ball. And they've been doing it the entire game. And she finally got around there and got that block. Hodzik for three. Hinshaw with the rebound and the putback. Just got to get in front and box out. ECU is just not paying enough attention to rebounding the ball and as coach McNeil empties her bench there there she's about to sub a lot of people out right now she cannot be happy with her uh, lack of effort on the rebounding rebounds all about effort and it has not been there consistently tonight and really that's the key word we, we've seen it but not through the full 30 minutes thus far and unable to keep it in it'll be Bulls ball you look at the rebounds, 39-25 overall rebounds, and that big advantage in favor of the Bulls. Top team in the conference in rebounding. They out rebound their opponents by an average of 10 a game. Now those changes out on the floor for ECU. Back to the sister-on-sister -sister competition, the Cheneke, Elena, and Katarina. So far, Elena's gotten the better of her twin tonight. Bahadzik for three. It's interesting how both coaches spoke about the, their respective Chineke player and how both coaches said that there was the language barrier that they struggle with more than anybody else on their team. Obviously, East Carolina doesn't have as many Europeans if, and as USF does, but the Greek language their alphabet is so much different than uh, everyone else's and so I can imagine how hard that is for those specific girls coming over here you played in Greece you played for the one of the top teams there Panathinaikos in Athens they could use your translation services I'm sure oh my gosh I'm telling you that was a trip I my teammates tried to teach me the alphabet and I started learning some words like pharmacy and, and little words, you know, out on the street and stuff, but it, it, it's a totally different culture. It's not as European, you know, as, as Spain or Italy. Um, that's not as Americanized in, Gre in Greece. So it would be extremely hard for a young kid to come over here, especially where nobody knows Greek. Everyone over there knows some English. So I was lucky. That's yeah, really alphabet. Pretty different. And speaking of Spain, Bermejo with the basket for the Bulls. Puts them up by 32. Three minutes into the fourth. Long pull up from Monk. Short. We've seen her hit from just about anywhere. And that's certainly not out of her range. Shineke running the floor. Lost it, but it'll stay with the Bulls. It's not necessarily the shot that Coach McNeil wants. She kind of tipped her head down a little bit after that second same shot by Monk, but I understand why Monk is wanting to shoot that. She's she's wanting to get this team back in the game, but it's just not happening right now for the Pirates. In for the board, Harvey fouled. Sydney Harvey quietly having a very good game. 
Harvey, 12 points, three rebounds, two assists. Well, you say quietly, and, and you're exactly right. Um, Coach Fernandez talks about how this kid just plays within herself, which is such a huge statement because when you're young and you're not a professional athlete, understanding how to play within the game, play within the system, within your abilities and your strengths, it's an incredible f uh, understanding of the game that Sydney Harvey has, and that's something that's so solid that she brings to the USF team. She's, uh, she's a tremendous player and somebody they have to have on the court at all times if they want to go further in the postseason. Over the head of Thompson, turned over, and that was exactly what Coach Fernandez said in when he spoke with Chris at halftime, he was talking about Helene Chaneke, and he said she's playing within herself. And for young players, sometimes that can be the biggest battle. Oh, for, for a lot of players, until they've played long enough or within a system that they can understand, learning the game takes years. And if you're not a student of the game and you don't have somebody teaching you how to be a student of the game, which is hard to do anyway whenever you're young, I just think it's really, really awesome that she's this young and she already plays within herself. Able to force the turnover. No whistle on the other end. Clater battling. She forced the turnover, ran the floor, and fouled on the second attempt. That'll send her to the line. I just saw Coach McNeil on the sideline say, huddle, huddle after that play her team's a little dejected right now which is somewhat understandable with the score but that's not something she wants to see from her team she wants this team to play 40 minutes of basketball regardless of the score every possession play your hearts out and she's just trying to get them going right now and on back on the floor for the bulls their sophomore point guard from italy that's been a point of emphasis all year long Play the full 40 minutes. Don't worry about the score. And they've done that in the last three games. And that's been a large part of the reason that they've won the last three games, particularly in that game against Temple. They didn't worry about the score. They just continued to fight. And they ultimately were able to come from behind for that big win. Yeah, but then guess what? They come to the dungeon. And this is a really, really hard place to win. Well put. Hinshaw on the baseline, kicks out. Great ball movement, Bermejo, got it. It's the spacing. This seems so good at understanding spacing. And when the, everyone can shoot, it's easier to have good space, but great ball movement, like you said, and everybody's just lighting it up now. Bermejo, her sister played for the Spanish senior national team, a pro player in Spain. Those, nice bloodline. Yeah, one of those players who can come off the bench and really give you some big contributions. Cristina Bermejo. And the shot not on target. Looking to run. Janeke maybe had an eye up. As she saw nothing but open space in front of her and couldn't corral it. A timeout. 445 remaining in the ball game. The Bulls. Taking full control, USF leads 77 to 43. Undeniable. The fight to the top is coming to a new home. Be sure to claim your spot at the new battleground for this year's American Athletic Conference Championship. March 12th to the 15th at Dickey's Arena in Fort Worth, Texas.
be undeniable. Coach Fernandez making an appearance. Hey, Coach. He's got to be pleased with what he's seen tonight. And the Bulls fans, they are very pleased with what he's done now. His 20th year here in Tampa. You think about it, postseason appearances in the last 15 of the last 16 years, including eight straight. They won the Women's NIT Championship, seven NCAA tournament appearances. He really has them humming along on all cylinders. Well, what's scary is that this is actually a disappointing down year for him because of the injuries they lost their best player Alvarez early in the season they've had so they've been riddled with injuries with their main players having to skip lots of games and not having a lot of um, flow within the team but now they're obviously on all cylinders going into the end of February but unfortunately unless they win the conference tournament which is going to be a big task against UConn. Obviously, that's who you have to go through. They won't make the NCAA tournament, but they will go to the WNIT. And I look to them to win to win the WNIT. I think they're good enough. I think that if they can stay out of um, having injuries, then I think that they can go really far. If they can stay healthy, I think they could certainly win the women's NIT championship this year. We head back down to check in with Chris. They're going to toss. Chris, uh, I believe he has yeah, a special guys, guest. I do, I do. A much smaller Jose Fernandez, uh, if you will. And I know a lot of Bulls fans who get to watch on here or get to see games in person. Coach doesn't smile a lot during the games, but uh, you know, I asked him about the bobblehead that's available to season ticket holders today in the SMU game, and he just did a little bobble for me. So it's uh, <laughs> funny to kind of watch him do all that. And uh, apparently there are some fans who are already up in the Northeast who will be talking uh, with their SID about getting some bobbleheads up there to Hartford. See if we can get one of those. Thanks, Chris. Hey, you mentioned the huge loss, the injuries they've dealt with this year, particularly their star freshman point guard, Maria Alvarez, the Miami native coach. I spoke with him earlier this season. He was effusive in his praise for her. He said he knew her. They're both from Miami. She won a state championship in high school, plays well beyond her years, and not having her, that has been a huge hit. Well, and you just said it there, state championship winner, really good coaches really seek out winners and it's important in high school whenever these kids can win state championships not just go to state and whatever it shows you the type of kid that's going if they're good enough to play for coach Fernandez here at USF then they're obviously good enough to take their high school team to a state championship game and and I know it's disappointing for him but what about that bobblehead you're a big time you're a big time person if you have a bobblehead so good job coach Fernandez you're exactly right about that. Beloved here in Tampa, and for good reason. The three able to hit, and that is exactly what the Pirates are looking for, but ultimately you've got to imagine it's too little too late and trying to get somebody on the board besides Thompson and Monk, and Josephs knocks down the triple. And the Bulls... Looking to take time off the clock. Bermejo fouled at the elbow. <laughs> Had the opportunity to spend some time with coach in Las Vegas earlier this season. There at the duel in the desert. And he is as intense as it comes. But when the game is not in action, he, he's a great guy. He's absolutely fantastic. Great sense of humor and really glad that I had that chance to Get to know him. Big thanks to him and everyone at USF for that opportunity. Three minutes remaining. 30-point Bulls lead. Well, he seems to have a good balance with his life. You know, all, all about basketball whenever it's between the lines. And then I, I, I don't... I'm, don't want to say relaxes after because I'm not sure any coach relaxes during their season outside of the basketball court, but he obviously has 
enough of a personality to uh, have some fun off the court. He does, and the players love him, and that may be the most important thing. The players, they want to play for him. They are willing to go to the hilt. Harvey, short. Jordao underneath, creating space, in and out. Henshaw to Bermejo. The offensive rebounding bonanza continues, and finally, it'll be a trip to the line for Sidney Harvey. They just have their hands on the ball all the time. It, even if you think you have the basketball, you have to really hold on to it because USF is not going to quit rebounding the ball at all. That's a really nice effort. Everybody getting involved. You don't think about Harvey, not the tallest. The sophomore five foot ten, but putting in work in the low block along with Bermejo and Jordao, Henshaw as well. These teams. Two games remaining in the regular season. ECU. He hosts Tulane and then at Cincinnati on March the 2nd to wrap up the regular season. And the Bulls. Games against SMU and then on the road. Big Monday at UConn. Big Monday, wow. Well, if they play like they play tonight, UConn's going to have their hands full with this team because they can, obviously, we've seen them score it from every position and in every way possible that you can score the basketball with the exception of dunking the ball. So if they play like this, what a, wow, what great hands Jordal has right there. Nice touch. The Iberian Peninsula connection, Bermejo to Jordal. Great look and equally impressive finish. I just like to give you props on the pronunciations of the, these names. You're doing them justice, and I'm proud of you for that. I don't know about that, but I appreciate it. 65 seconds remaining in the ball game. The final result not in doubt. And Claire, remember, this was a Pirates team who led at the end of the first quarter. It was just a one-point Pirates lead, but UCF, they found, or excuse me, USF, my sincere apologies there, the Bulls found a completely different gear. They skipped gears. They went from first to sixth in the second quarter. Yeah, they did. And I think some of that too, though, is ECU. They don't have as deep of a bench as USF does. So their 40 minutes of hell that I would like to say that they run, they had to pull that back a little bit. And it's hard to do that whenever you have a really short bench and against a really good USF team that can just bring in player after player that can score and they just got ran down tonight. They did indeed wave after wave of Bull coming off the bench, keeping legs fresh. And they will win their 13th game of the year here at home at the Yingling Center and now a 13 and two record. You talk about the dungeon defending home court, they do it. Well, it's a pride aspect for them and kudos to Coach Fernandez and the Bulls basketball team for not wanting to lose on their home court. The USF comes away victorious, 81 to 52, the final, a big victory for the Bulls. It snaps the Pirates' three-game win streak. And the Pirates, they're gonna have to get back in gear quickly to Lane and at Cincinnati, the final two games of the regular season coming up. And for the Bulls, as we mentioned, it will host SMU on the 29th and then Big Monday up in stores at UConn, their final game of the regular season. What a performance from the freshman from Thessaloniki. Elena, she and her sister had the opportunity to play against each other for the first time ever in the collegiate ranks. And I think it's safe to say Elena got the better of Katarina tonight. She did, and she's a starter for USF, so she's used to getting that playing time, but she had a great game. Head down to check in with Chris, standing in by a very happy Coach Fernandez. Yeah, thanks, guys. So, Coach, we talked before the game about turnovers. Only 12 tonight. Had to be one of your best performances in recent today. Yeah, I think uh, the ball really moved, and we got the ball where we needed it to get to. And 
I thought the big thing is uh, we did a good job rebounding the basketball. We knew you know, we had to do a good job on Monk and Thompson, and they got 27 at half. But the other guys didn't contribute. But a good win, and now we got a couple days off before we got SMU rolling in here. Yeah, you mentioned uh, rebounding. How about free throws? You only missed two tonight. A coach has to like that. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Very, all right, very short and sweet. Thanks, Coach. Thanks. Let's bring in one of the stars of the game and uh, one of the better halves of the Chenecki Twins, shall we say, Elena. What was it like getting to play against your twin sister here tonight? Uh, it's always fun. It's always fun. We have done this before. Uh, we're talking to each other. It's fun. I, I don't know. It's but, it, but it's for sure difficult to guard each other. It's difficult to guard each other. Yeah, just you were able to find the basket tonight. Just what what were you feeling out there tonight? Uh, you know, we all we all show some great energy. We we eliminated our turnovers. Uh, this is this helped for our def, for our defense and offense. So yeah, we got we got our rebounds. So we on the floor. Yeah. Yes. Will there be a, a text or a phone call after this game with your sister? So can you repeat that? Will there be a text or phone call with your sister after this one? Phone call? Like, Will there be a text or a phone call? Will you see her before she leaves? Uh, <laughs> yes, like, <laughs> yes. I'm still gonna, gonna see her right now. We're gonna talk. And then till we meet again. Yeah, all right. Yes. Thanks so much. Congratulations on the victory. All righty, guys, back to you. Thanks, Chris. They will meet again. That much is for sure. But tonight, round one as Collegiate Stars in the States. Elena gets the better of Katarina. Elena finishes the game at 19 points, three rebounds, and an assist. And the Bulls come away with a big victory at home. 81 to 52, the final for our entire crew. For Chris Torello and my partner, Claire Coggins and Kim McConico, the final from Tampa, USF with the win, 81-52 over ECU.